Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the unit circle. And the unit circle is a circle imposed on the coordinate plane, the x and y axis, and the center of the circle is the origin. And the circle in the unit circle has a radius of 1, thus unit or 1 unit. So the unit circle, since it has, is centered at the origin and the circle has a radius of 1, we know that if we travel out along on the x-axis, on the far right-hand side here, we have the ordered pair 1, 0. And at the top, if you will, we're going to go one unit up the y-axis. That ordered pair is 0, 1. And we can work our way around the unit circle, writing our first four ordered pairs. And this would be 0 on the x, negative 1 on the y. So every single radius of our unit circle has is a radius of 1. So this length is 1 unit long. And this length is 1 unit long. And this length is 1 unit long because every radius has a length of 1. That's why we were able to do those first four ordered pairs. Well, in trigonometry, we know that we can form a right triangle, and our reference angle will always come between the x-axis and our radius of 1. So if this is some angle theta, our radius is 1, we can draw a right triangle, and this point on the unit circle then will have some ordered pair x and y. And the x, of course, will be um, our length here, and our y, how high we rise. So let's take a look at some specific angles. Instead of just using a generic angle theta, Let's go ahead and start with an angle of 30 degrees. So we re may recall our 30 degree angle then if we draw a right angle down we've got ourselves a 30, 60, 90 and we know our 30, 60, 90s are going to be 1 square root of 3 and 2. But in this case the side opposite our right angle, our hypotenuse, is really, it's not 2, it's 1. Which means our side opposite the 30 has to be half of that. So the side opposite the 30 is 1 half. So now we know that that height is 1 half. But then how far out is our 60? Well, that's normally the x radical 3 side, or 1 square root of 3, but since we're only working with half of that, it's 1 half square root of 3. So our x coordinate is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, and our y coordinate is going to be 1 half. Let's keep moving here around our unit circle and let's go ahead and do a different angle. Let's go ahead and do a 45 degree reference angle where our theta is 45. Well now we're going to have a new point on the unit circle. I'll get rid of my 30, 60, 90 radius for a minute, and we've got ourselves a right angle, get rid of that square root of 3 over 2. So 
we may recall in our 45, 45, 90, or our isosceles right triangle, our sides are opposite the 45s are going to be the same, and our 90 is going to be the square root of 2, or opposite the 90. But in our example here, our radius is 1, so it's not the square root of 2 which is going to change the value of our sides opposite our 45 degree angles. Well, we may remember we call these x, x, and x radical 2. So if the x square root of 2 side now is 1, well, we want to solve for x, so we divide both sides by the square root of 2. So we get x equals 1 over the square root of 2. And then we have to rationalize and we see that x is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So that means the sides opposite our 45 degree angles are the square root of 2 over 2. And since the triangle's isosceles, they are both the same. So this ordered pair, I'm out square root of 2 over 2 on the x-axis. I rise square root of 2 over 2 on the y-axis, so that ordered pair is the square root of 2 over 2 for x and the square root of 2 over 2 for y. So I have another ordered pair now at 45 degrees. And then let's go ahead and take a look at an even steeper reference angle. I'll get rid of my 45 degrees, all that information, and we will do a 60 degree reference angle. So if I have a 60 degree reference angle and my hypotenuse is 1, well, drawing my right triangle inside the unit circle, my reference angle theta is now 60. My 30 is going to be up here. Well, going back to what we had before with my 30, 60, 90, now I'm one half out on the x-axis, and I am square root of 3 over 2 high on the y-axis. So that ordered pair is 1 half is x, and square root of 3 over 2 is my y. And we can do this all the way around the unit circle. Interestingly enough, I can do this in the second quadrant where I can draw a radius of 1. And if my reference angle here is 30 degrees, my theta is 30, I can draw another right triangle and the ordered pairs to this now are going to be opposite my 30 is 1 half, opposite my 60 is square root of 3 over 2, but I'm out here on the negative x-axis, right? Remember, in quadrant 2, x's are negative and y's are positive. Okay, that's very important in trigonometry. So this now is negative square root of 3 over 2. So my ordered pair here, my x is negative square root of 3 over 2, and my y is a positive one half. I'm still rising in the positive direction here. I'm above the x axis. And I can repeat that process for a 45 degree reference angle, which I can do here in green. So if this angle is 45 degrees, well, we can steal our information from the first quadrant, didn't we say that the x was square root of 2 over 2? And so was the y. However, we are in 
the second quadrant. So I'm moving in the negative direction here. So my x is now negative square root of 2 over 2. And my y, though, is still positive square root of 2 over 2. And then finally, I can do the same thing with a 60 degree reference angle. Get a little cluttered here, but my radius is still 1. My angle is 60 degrees. I draw another right triangle and opposite my 30 degree is 1 half, but it's negative because I'm in the negative I'm in the second quadrant, so x's are negative. So I have negative 1 half for x and then y is square root of 3 over 2. And you can see here that our unit circle is symmetrical. The only difference in my ordered pairs, they're exactly the same except for the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So as you work your way around the unit circle, remember in quadrant 1, x's are positive and y's are positive. In quadrant 3, x's are negative and y's are negative. And in quadrant 4, X's are positive and Y's are negative. And you can do this same thing the rest of the way around the unit circle using our special right triangles, our 30, 60, 90s, and our 45, 45, 90s. I'm going to talk about one more thing with respect to the unit circle, and that is our trig functions. I'm going to go back to the first quadrant. I'm going to work with our 30, 60, 90 again. I'm going to leave the ordered pair there. So we have a 30 degree angle. And we know our sides of our right triangle are the opposite the 30 is 1 half. And opposite the 60 is square root of 3 over 2. And our hypotenuse, our r, is 1. So that's y, that's x. And when we previously con constructed our trigonometric functions, yes, we said sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but we also said sine is y over r. Well, Looking at our right triangle here, sine is y over r, that'd be 1 half over 1. So 1 half over 1 is just simply 1 half. So we know that the sine is going to be our y coordinate from our ordered pair. Cosine is x over r. Well, since r is 1 and x is the square root of 3 over 2, so we get the square root of 3 over 2 over 1. x over r, since r is 1, the square root of 3 over 2 is cosine and sine. So interestingly enough, every ordered pair on the unit circle is the ordered pair cosine sine. So as you construct the unit circle and you construct the ordered pairs, you are also finding out the cosine of that reference angle and the sine of that reference angle. So now we know the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2, and sure enough, so is the sine, is the square root of 2 over 2. Now there's one more aspect of the unit circle that I'm not going to get to in this video, and that is converting these degree measures to radians. Okay? As you learn and use the unit circle, we will work with these degree measures, this 30, 45, and 60 degree marks, we'll work with that in radian measure. 
And that we will tackle in the next video or in a future video. So there's an introduction of the unit circle. We've done the first 180 degrees. You should be able to construct the, the next 180 or the rest of the way around the unit circle and construct all those ordered pairs. Okay, so we've done up to this point, we've done 30, 45, and 60, but we've also done 120, 135, and 150 degrees as we work our way around the unit circle. And we can continue to do the same thing as we do the lower half, or I should say quadrants three and four of the unit circle. And I will give you an opportunity to work on that when I see you in class.